Um, in terms of returns, um, historically, the US index, for example, has provided a return of between 8 and 10% per annum, historically. If you are getting that rate of return on the investment, that means over a 10 year period, um, you should, your money should at least double. Your investment should at least double. So it's a, wait, it's a waiting game. You need to wait it out. So, so investing in stocks. So remember I said the, the best qualities are consistency, uh, and temperament. consistency and temperament. Right. So you have to be able to wait for the money to buy. There are key two factors when it comes to investing in stocks. There is time and there is the rate of return. The longer the time, the better for you. Um, and I was having this conversation with one of my nephews. He just finished uni and I was telling him, I was teaching him about investing. I said, if I had this information that I have today when I was your age, there is no way I won't be a multi in pounds or in dollars or whatever currency you want to make. It, it is just, it, it's impossible that I won't be a multi mm. um, So now he's starting early, so he has a longer time span for his money to work for him. So he doesn't have to invest as aggressively as I would have to invest to get the same, to create the same amount of wealth. Mm -hmm. But I've started late, which is why from day one, when I when we gave that to my daughter, I set up an investment account from day one. So the money starts work from from day one. By the time she's thirty, I'm sure she'll be way more wealthy than I am. She's just be a big girl, you know. She's just like flying cow and all that. She gets the just the box up. Yeah, and one thing about having that kind of investment part is wealth unlocks your creativity. Mm. Because by the time she finishes school, she's not going to do work or going to, to, to work because she needs to pay to bills. Pay. So she's not forced to jump at any opportunity that comes. She's because the wealth is already there, she can be patient to work on whatever her heart desires, where her creativity lies. Mm. So she's not constrained by cash flow. So she can actually do something she enjoys. And you actually excel the best when you're doing something where your heart is. Um, so that's one advantage of it. Or that's the biggest advantage of it. Not the money it's in itself, but the creativity you know, it unlocks. Um, so yeah, so in terms of the rate of return, it's, historically it's been between eight and 10% per year. Okay. Um, I'll give you another example just to illustrate or to drive home the power of time and how money compounds over time. Now, Coca-Cola did its first share, share sale mm -hmm. in 1920. And each share was sold at $40 a share. Assuming in 1920, someone bought one share in Coca-Cola for $40, and that was all he did. And he never invested again in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. And all he did was he allowed that 40, every time he got a dividend, he reinvested it in Coca Cola. That was the only single investment decision he made in his entire lifetime. And he blew all his other money, everything, he spent it all. By 2012, can anyone guess what the value of <laughs> or was at 2012? Mm. Guess anyone. I, I don't know who wants to guess because I don't, I don't want to care. Because if it's 1920s, buy it at $40 a pound. By 2012, like the billionaire, really, or well, depending on the quantity it got. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll answer the question. By 2012, that $40 was worth $9.8 million. Okay. Now, in, wait, what? $9.8 million. The forty pound, forty dollars, was what had become nine point eight million dollars as of twenty twelve. Now imagine if that same person decided and said, "Okay, you know what? Let me put forty dollars in Coca Cola every month without fail, consistently, 
Just imagine what he would end up with. It's, 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 it's a ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> you know, so, wait, 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 wait. Let's calm down. Calm down. <laughs> wait, so I need to ask this question. You know, yeah, I get it that you appreciate over time is a waiting game. But you know, the, with the way, I mean, for example, you talk about your experience when you invest in the stock and the value went to zero. Mm. Don't I have the same kind of risk with index funds? Yeah, so, so that, that's the thing. So now, when I invested in Post I was investing in a single company. Mm -hmm. But with, with index funds, you're taking away the risk by diversifying across the past of companies. So if there's a recession, right, if some of them die, not all of them are going to die. Right? Now, remember also that what you're doing with index investing is a concept we call dollar cost averaging. So what it means is you're investing a specific amount of money into the index month by month without fail. So what it means is sometimes you're paying an average price for the index because the price of the index would fluctuate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're buying when it's low. Sometimes you're buying when it's high. Even those recession times, you are still investing month by month without fail. Those are the times that the index hits a bottom. That means whatever money you're putting in at that time is buying you a bigger portion of the index than previously. Mm. So you're getting more value. Now, over an eternal period of time, because sometimes you've got high, sometimes you've got average, sometimes you've got low. Over an eternal period of time, you end up paying an average price for the market. So that's what we call dollar cost averaging. Now, however, if you look at, if you look historically, and you, if you look at the movement of the market prices, even though there are short-term fluctuations, over the long term, the trajectory of the market has always been upwards. So when the market over the long term goes upwards and over time you're paying an average price for that market, the gap between the upward movement and the average line, which is a straight line, is the gains you make. So if you look at within a, a, a one-year period, you will see heavy spikes mm -hmm. in the market price. But if you extend your time horizon, all those sharp spikes in the short term even out. Mm -hmm. And you see like a, an upward trajectory in the market. That is what you're doing. So you pay an average price, which is a straight line, and you capture the gains over the long time. Now, there, there are two types of indexes that are usually on offer. If you're buying the S&P index, there's the S&P 500 income index, mm -hmm. and there's the S&P 500 accumulation index. The two, they're, they're the same thing, but they're slightly different. The income index are for income investors. What, I, what that means is when the components of the index pay dividends, they pay out the dividends to you in cash. Mm -hmm. That's usually for people that are retirement age. So they get like quarterly dividends that they use for their day-to-day -day living. The accumulation type of index is the ones that they don't pay out cash. They don't pay out the dividends in cash. Once the dividend comes, they reinvest it and plow it back into the index on your behalf. So what that means is when you start to invest in quarter one, you get dividends. Instead of paying out the dividends in cash, they take the dividends and they reinvest it. In quarter two, that means the dividends that was reinvested in quarter one is also generating its own dividend. So a seed is given back to its own seed. That's how compounding works. And then quarter three, quarter one and quarter two dividends are given back to their own dividends. That's how your money compounds and grows quicker. So what you'll find out is in the short term, over year one, two, three, four, five, you might not see a lot happening. It just looks like, oh, this thing is dead in the water. There's no movement. But give it time. And that's where temperament comes in. Over time, towards the later years, that's when you begin to see the massive impact of, of compound interest. So Warren Buffett, who is one of the richest men in the world and the richest investor of all time today, the, the best of his investments or the, the most of his wealth was created when he crossed year 50. Mm. Because that's when the compounding kicks in, when the time is long enough. 
that's where compounding kicks in. So what I usually say is if you're not willing to invest for at least 10 years, don't do it. Don't bother going in stocks. Don't don't bother because there's a high likelihood that in the short term you could get less than what you invested. Let me ask you this question. I'm going to take it. There are two questions that have to do with this. So, uh, so the first one, I think you've answered. So generally speaking, the portfolio rises and falls with the index, if tracked, right? Mm -hmm. But if one is active, a fund manager can sense low performance of index fund and diverse. Please, what is your take on this? Wait, don't rush. Wait, <laughs> that's the second question. So he said, and true, the the index fund is double-edged sword, smoothens out volatility and then lessens risk. But a broad-based, in fact, I'm going to ask him to ask you the question. Ask this one first, then I will mute him to ask you the question. Okay. So I mean, that, that's the that's the argument mm -hmm. that fund managers will give to say, okay, yeah, if you're doing an index fund investment. Um, what you're doing is you're investing in a basket of companies. So you, your money is spread across both high performance companies. And even low performance. Mm -hmm. and what the fund manager will try to convince you is that I am able to actively pick out the high performance and avoid the low performance. Mm -hmm. But historically, that, they've not been able to do that consistently, successfully. Right. So I would rather stick on the side of history because there's no evidence to show that they can achieve what they say they will do. They've always said that, but the results show otherwise. Um, so in reality, there is really nothing wrong with having a basket of companies that has the high performance and a, and a mix of low performance companies because your alternative mm -hmm. is to one engage a fund manager who would who cannot promise you that he would do better than that basket anyway and then you're going to pay for him so i would go for the more assured option that's mm -hmm. one that cannot guarantee me and i have to pay him and he cannot even guarantee that he would do as well as the market, which is a combination of good and poor. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? So, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, so that, that's kind of my, my perspective. Now, however, if you feel mm -hmm. that you have, so you know we're talking about passive and, and active. If you feel, so passive, which is index, is for people that don't have the time and the inclination to do the research. However, if you feel that you have the time and the inclination and the patience to be active, then you can decide and say, okay, I want to do my own research, identify the companies I want to invest in, mm -hmm. determine what price I am willing to pay for the company I want to invest in, and if I want to sell that company, what price I want to sell it at? Now, that involves a significant amount of work okay. and temperament, and which is what I do. So I do active investing. I don't do passive. Okay. So, you, so you have a portfolio of index funds at the same time then have the ones that you invest in directly. So, so the way I do it is this. I, I invest in index funds as and holding pattern. So when I have, when I put money aside, I put it in the index fund so I continue to get whatever the index fund gives me in return. So I hold it in the index fund until I identify a specific company I'm willing to invest in. Then I liquidate my index fund and I push the funds into it. Okay. So my, my index fund, my strategy for index fund is a holding pattern fund. So that my money is not lying in cash doing nothing. Okay, so so, so instead, instead of me putting my money in a savings account, just sitting down there, I put it in index funds, allow it to continue to have the compound interest, and then if I want to be an active 
investor, when I identify that one stock that I can liquidate from my index and then put it into that one. Yeah. So that is if you want to do pass. That is my own personal strategy. Okay. It is not a recommended strategy. Now, because the, the reason is this. When I do index investment, I invest for an extended period of time. So I'll give an example. I was index investing since 2013. I didn't liquidate that index investment until March 2020. So that was seven years before I rolled it into a specific company. Is that not, is that not very risky? Like seven years of investment into one, into one stock. Yeah, so the thing is, I did that switch during the panic of Corona. In March, when prices were at rock bottom prices. I see. Genius. So even though, so even though during the crisis, mm -hmm. the index fell with the crisis, mm -hmm. but because I'd invested it for so long, it still fell to a point where I was still in a positive position, even when I liquidated it, because I'd invested it for an extended period. A long time. So when I liquidated it, I wasn't liquidating it at a loss. I was liquidating it at a profit, at a decent profit that I began over seven years. Okay. And then I rolled it into a specific stock that I'm hit rock bottom. So this is a stock that fell, I don't know, about roughly about 80% during Corona. So um, the company in question is called QSR, um, Restaurant Brands International. It's the company, the parent company for um, Burger King and uh, some other brands. Mm -hmm. um, they're quite popular in Canada. And since March, the company has recovered about 90%. So, that, that, that's, so that, that's the compounding aspect of it. So now the gain I made from the index that I've rolled into restaurant brands has also gained 90% on top of that. Remy, how can you be my friend? <laughs> you don't tell me. Remy, you have to listen, listen. When we are friends, you have to be telling me about all these things. The, the thing is, this, it, it, could easily, it could easily have gone the other way. Yeah, well, true. Right. It, it, could, it could have, so this, this has happened between March and now. It could easily have, take, have taken five years to materialize. Mm -hmm. When I was doing it, I had no idea that it was going to cover 90% within three months. That wasn't the focus. The focus is, I, I like the price of restaurant brands. It is way below my, my desired entry price. I think it's a strong company. I think it has a good continuing advantage. I think the next 10 to 15 years, it will still be around and alive. Therefore, I'm willing to make this bet. And I'm willing to lock it in there for the long haul. If it takes five years, it takes five years. If it takes 10 years, it takes 10 years. If it takes 20 years, it takes 20 years. I really don't care. Now that he's, it's taking three months to gain 90%, well, fine. So are you going to take it out or you're just going to leave it? No, I, I, I'm not taking it out. I've just left it. I, I put it in there and I forget about it. And I look for the next day. Okay. Remy, we have to start taking questions now because we've been talking for one hour and I feel as if you have not been telling me some things, Remy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with Ovina. Uh, uh, Ovina, can you please unmute and ask, there are two questions I've missed that you sent. The right after Ubina Kola, you can please ask your question. Ubina, sorry, please go ahead with your question that he hasn't answered. Okay. Um, thank you, Remy. Um, I think you've been very um, extremely practical here. Um, thank you, I know as well. I, I have um, done a bit of investment before, but got my fingers burnt, so I stayed away. So I think you've answered the major ones. The other thing I just want to quickly find out is what, what sort of stocks I, the best investment strategy. So do you look for index that's got growth, um, yield, new issues of defensive stocks, or do you just identify an index um, based on some sort of performance, performance out there and then you go for it? Or do you look at the index and analyze within it what sort of, or what type of stocks they've got and that informs um, how you choose your index? That, that's the first question. 
Okay, so let, let me take that, that question. So yeah, th there are tons of indexes out there. And I, I try to, to stay away from indexes that have been created by, um, by fund managers that try to, to provide kind of like a, a kind of view of expectation of superior returns. Um, so they could say, they could come and say, oh, um, this is um, uh, BlackRock's um, Emerging Markets Technology Index. Mm. So they, that means in that kind of index, you say, okay, we're focusing on technology stocks in the emerging markets that we think they're going to grow so fast, they're going to outperform everybody else. So that means they're trying to apply a particular kind of expertise in selecting the components of the index such that they believe that the results will out outperform every other person. Okay. I stay away from those types of indexes. I just go for the kind of vanilla index. Okay. So for example, the S&P 500, it is the top 500 companies in the US and the indexes are they are self-managed. So if any company within the index doesn't match up to the criteria, because the S&P 500 is reviewed, I think, quarterly or so, or every six months. So there's certain criteria for companies to be classified as part of the S&P 500. It's based on size, performance, and things like that. Once a company begins to underperform, they chuck it out of the index, and they put in the next best. So it's kind of like a self-refreshing automatic process. Um, so those are the ones I go for, those vanilla indexes. Um, I, I stay away from all the other ones that require a fund manager to apply one form of expertise. And you find out that those type of indexes where fund managers kind of pull together themselves, they often have higher management costs okay. compared to the vanilla indexes. Um, so the thing about it is, the lower your cost, the better, the better your returns. So I just go for the vanilla ones that are low cost, low maintenance, market returns, and then that's it. Okay, I think the second thing I want is, um, how do you um, evaluate or compare expense ratios across some um, indexes you choose? Um, I, I know you said something about in terms of a, a, a benchmark you don't want to go below. But sometimes you may see an index that seems to be cheaper than the other, but then it's, it's performance over a period of time with the same one that is higher seem to be a bit higher. So what, what would inform a decision? So if on day one, um, I have X amount of pounds and I want to invest, and I see two in, in, in indexes, one is significantly cheaper, should I just automatically jump to the cheaper one? In terms of expense, or are there some other indicators that could tell me that in the next six months from today, actually this is more expensive, but it's going to outperform the one that is cheaper? Now, the argument to this is simple: it's it's assumed that cost is is a, it's it's um it's a sort of indication of value. So I'm assuming making that simple analogy. And so, what have been your experience in this in this context? Yeah. So I mean, what I tend to do is. One, I look at the, the, the reputation and the quality of the company providing the index. Okay. I look at the cost of it. Um, and then I look at, so what, what, when you're checking the index, they would, they would normally show you what the index performance is versus the benchmark. Okay. Yeah. So let's say the Vanguard S&P 500 they would show you their performance and then they would show you the, their performance versus the actual S&P 500 companies that make up that index. Okay. So you want a, 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 an index fund that tracks as closely as possible to the index it is, it is focused on. Um, okay. And then you want to balance that with the cost and the reputation of the company. So for example, uh, in the UK, I invested in the s and government index for Legal and General and the one provided by Vanguard. Now, Legal and General is cheaper and they charge 0.06% per annum 
Vanguard is slightly higher, they charge 0 0.09% around. However, when I looked at how closely they track the index, they're kind of pretty much almost the same. Okay. However, Vanguard is a bigger, more established company. Okay. So for safety, I could say, well, for safety reasons, I, I don't mind paying the extra 0.03% and I'll go with Vanguard. Okay. Um, just to give me that safety blanket. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the, the closer it tracks the index it's looking after, the better. And if you can get that at the lower cost, then all the better. Uh, and don't don't be offended with me. One last question, and I will just jump out of this the space. And maybe uh, Remy, if you if you are happy to to share your personal details later, and I can pick that up and have more questions because I'm very interested in this. Now, yeah. the fi the final question is: um, Do you have any hedge strategies for your investment in stocks, or are you just um, open and exposed? If you do have hedge strategies, what are they? What have you used? Yeah, so I, I don't do hedging at all. Um, okay. I, I don't hedge at all. Um, and that's because the reason I don't hedge is um, I, I, I believe I have a really extended investment horizon. Um, so since I started investing in 2013, I have never pulled out any. Wow. Not oh, hold on. Um, like everything has gone in has stayed in, nothing has come out. <laughs> Um, so um, I, I believe that the money would grow itself over time, maybe closer to retirement. Okay. And begin to say, okay, what kind of hedging strategies can I kind of begin to deploy to make sure that I don't lose capital? Uh, okay. But for now, I'm still good to go for another I don't know, 20, 30 years. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not looking into hedging at all just now. If the market crashes. And my portfolio crashes 80%. I don't care. Um, in fact, when the prices go down, I'm happier because it means I can buy more cheap. Okay. And that's what I've always done. Um, um, I'll give you an example. Um, so one thing about, about active investing is sometimes you, you could see a company you like. It's trading at the price you want it to. Okay. And, or trading even below the price you want it to. Okay. And it's a good company. And you buy it. It doesn't mean that the price cannot fall lower than your entry price. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't mean it can't fall lower, fall lower than your entry price for an extended period of time. Because simply, you have no way of predicting future events. And that's why a long investment horizon is very crucial. If, not, if you're not invest, interested in investing for 10 minutes in a company, don't, in 10 years for a company, don't put in your money for 10 minutes. So I'll give you a typical example. There's a company in the UK that I've always, always wanted to buy. It was at the time I identified that company, it was trading at about 23 pounds a share. And I said to myself, if for any reason this company trades at between 8 and 10 pounds a share, I would look for all the money I, I have and I'll buy. And lo and behold, years passed by and it never happened. <laughs> and on one single day, one single day, I was at work and I just opened the news and the company ran into some problems with an IT project, which meant they couldn't kind of communicate and connect with their customers. It means they had to write up a lot of loans. Uh, and the company crashed from 23 pounds a share to about four pounds a share in one single day, just because of that news. And I thought to myself, I was willing to pay eight pounds a share, and it's now trading at four. And I thought to myself, let me step back and understand the detail of the situation before I commit money to this. So I went to review the news, I, I did some fact finding and I thought to myself, okay, the next day I will buy it. The next day it's already gone up from four, back, four pounds to five pounds. But I bought it at five pounds anyway. And I was happy. And it went up as high as ten pounds, so I doubled the money. 
And I kept my money in there. I was like, yeah, it's a no-brainer. I just need to move on. Then after a while, there was an investigation into the company for bad customer practices by the Financial Conduct Authority. And the share price came crashing down. It crashed down to about four pounds. So I was in a negative of about 20 like, Yeah, yeah, it's fine. They would overcome the inquiries, they would pay the penalties, and things like that. you know, the smooth made saving after that. Just after the inquiry was closed and they, they, they cleared the fines, there was a hostile takeover by a smaller company. And then the price crashed again. It crashed to about three pounds a share. So this was a double one. Problem of the problem. They had to spend money to defend themselves from the hostile takeover, and they succeeded. Now, things were good, and things started recovering again. I'm like, okay, yeah, finally we're back on track. And then all of a sudden, maybe after that, Corona hit. <laughs> and then it was down to £1.50 a share. Oh my God. So I've gone from investing at five pounds to one pound. To one pound, so I've lost three pounds for every stock I bought. And the mm. thing was, I still had confidence in the company. I knew, I felt that all the things that happened were events out of control. It didn't have any impact on the on the fundamental role the company was playing in the UK and the quality of its management. So even at those times that it kept falling, I kept buying and adding more to my position. Hmm. So that, that is why if you decide to do active investing, if you're not willing to put your money into a company for at least 10 years, don't just pull out. And if you don't have the patience and the temperament to be able to sit down and make a balanced decision about whether you want to continue to hold on to the stock or cut your losses and move on. If you don't have that temperament, and if you are if you're the kind of person that will look into your portfolio and you see a 50% loss and you begin to pull your hair out, then don't do active investing. Don't just touch it. I mean, there have been several locations where the stocks I've invested in have dropped 50 to 60 percent. Not once, not twice. And they've recovered and I've gone on to make money. So if it's the ability to maintain your cool. So this particular company I'm talking about is still in the red of about 50% because I continue to add money to it. And it, it's, it, I've now added so much money to a significant portion of cool. But I'm willing to wait it out because I know that over time, or I'm confident that over time, it will still make me money. Because even at the time the issue started, you had to suspend dividends. And when they, when they overcame the host out, they started to pay dividends again. And that means money started coming in from my investment. But because of Corona, they had to suspend dividends again. But Corona will blow over. And then they will resume dividends. And suspending dividends was a precautionary measure to preserve capital. So as long as you have that temperament and that patience. So the thing is, not all your investments will go the way you expect. Some would rebound 100% in a matter of days or months. Some it would take years. But you just have to be patient. Remy, I have more questions. But let me allow other people to ask. Okay. Um, Kola, please, do you want to ask your question? So, thank you. So, sorry, what I wanted to ask is just about the stock um, broken firm to use. So, I... I know about Vanguard, so I contacted them uh, here. So I live in Germany. So, and I know Vanguard works with location where you currently live. So, and the process was kind of cumbersome. They say I have to go through bank or through some of their advice. So do you have any other uh, broken firm that I can buy considering the minimum fee, the charge, so that I will yeah. have to do um... So Vanguard is a good one. They, they might have like really kind of convoluted processing uh, around their set of process, but they are, they are, they are as best as they can get in terms of safety. Uh, so if you want to look at 
other options. Um, I mean, I'm not too familiar with the German market, but if you can check, I don't know whether Trading 212 uh, operates in, in Germany, but that's one company that I check. Um, there's also Interactive Investor, and that's another kind of stock we have in the one check. Um, um, the, I think the, the good companies you could go with uh, are quite international as well. But in terms of safety, I would run Vanguard number one uh, any day. Uh, but yeah, uh, check out options you have. And if I'll leave my details, if you, if you, if you kind of exceed Google search and show up options for you in Zoom, and if there's any one of them you want to kind of look at for you and kind of do some Google research and see what you know, I think is an option you should be uh, So yeah, feel free to find them on there. Okay, thank you. Benny, uh, you dropped the question. You want to ask that? All right, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, all right, okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, thank you for, um, you know, the, um, all the good tips you've been giving us. For me, um, it's not my area, really, right? Um, so I work in a completely different sector. But obviously, I've had this experience in the past, got my fingers burnt in Nigeria um, with the stock market. So now I'm just asking a general question because I'm in the United Kingdom. And for you, you're in the UK, but you said you invest mostly. Now, this is a general question, mostly in the US. What do you think about the United Kingdom in terms of generally about investments now, in terms of the fact that there are two things the UK is dealing with now? We've got the Brexit, which was there before, and then COVID has come in. Do you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage coming at this period in time? Yeah, so I mean, that, that's a very good point. Um, because of the, the issues UK is facing, Brexit and then this corona, you would notice that UK focused companies' stock prices are very depressed at the moment which seems to indicate that they're cheap compared to alternatives out there in countries. Now, the fact that they're cheap means that there's value, or potentially there's value uh, in terms of buying UK focused companies at the moment. However, uh, one thing about going after this kind of value deals is Again, you have no indication of how long it's going to take the UK to overcome this Brexit issue because we've been having it for how many years now. And then that's compounded by Corona, the impact on both the UK and the global economy. Now, so as long as the UK continues to struggle with those issues, chances are UK focused company share prices are going to remain depressed you will only begin to see an uplift in UK focused share prices when there begins to be a kind of visibility of a pathway out of the issues UK is facing. And that's where you begin to see that price appreciation. Um, so chances are, yeah, the companies seem like value. Chances are they will remain depressed for an elevated period of time. Provided that you're patient enough, there's a possibility that you make significant gains over time. Um, again, but there's also a chance that, um, well, because the issues prevail for so long, it really impacts the companies and can really kind of either weather the storm or it just damages them uh, fundamentally uh, in terms of competitiveness globally. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword when you're kind of looking at uh, deep value companies. Uh, so what I, what I try to do is I try to, if I'm investing in companies, I try to invest in companies that potentially have not necessarily a domestic outlook, but a global outlook. Okay. Uh, so that even though they may be based in the UK, and they have exposure to the UK market, they also have revenue streams growing. And then that way, even if the UK has problems for an extended period of time, it can still continue to make money significantly from other streams of income, other revenue streams from other parts of the world. 
Um, so for now, personally, I'm kind of staying away from companies that trade in the UK that are focused solely in the UK. Uh, I prefer more internationally facing companies um, that kind of spread the tentacles globally and maintain a competitive advantage. Uh, that's what I try to do. Trevi, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. So, um, Remy, I need to ask you this question because if somebody has dropped and I, I, I honestly have to ask you, is that, uh, no, no, not this one. Um, do you run a company in line? I know you do tax. Remy is my tax guy. I don't, yeah, Remy is a tax guy. But are you willing to invest for someone? If yes, if he does, and he's willing to, anyway, the long and short is, are you willing to help us or some of us if like listen i'm not able to understand this is this something you can do and if it's yes to something i do what are the criteria or or whatnot um i'll answer the question this way i have tried in the past to invest or to help people with investing and so kind of like take over the investment portfolio and help them kind of manage mm -hmm. or make investment decisions but it's a very, very difficult thing to do. So, and you can only do that successfully if the person has the same view and mindset as you. Help yourself, yeah. So for example, when I invest, I'm investing with a time horizon of 20, 25 years. So that means that I can afford for a specific investment in my portfolio to be rent for five years and I don't need that money. Okay, now the question would be if I was to invest in that same company for someone else, because what I try to do is I mirror my own investment. Mm -hmm. Will the person come back to me after year one and say, dude, what's going on? <laughs> and he calls every other day. Yeah. Do you know what I'm So it becomes a total nightmare to do that. And, and I don't know how fund managers could. I, 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 do, I just don't understand how they do that. Yeah. So it makes it really difficult. So what I have done in the past is rather than help people manage their, their money or something like that, I tend to kind of uh, invest on my own. And then if I'm buying a, a, a stock, I could just share the information and say, oh, this is what I'm doing at the moment. And if you're interested, you can decide to do it if you want to. Uh, and if you make money, you make money. And if you lose money, it's, it's <laughs> wait, 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 we calm down. <laughs> you know, because if, if the money, if the, if the investment goes south, yeah, yeah, nobody blames you. I could, I could wait it out, but yeah. someone else might not have that patience to wait it out. So if you are copying my investment, it is totally at your own kind of discretion. Okay, so and if you decide to say that at a loss earlier than I would. Yeah. Then I'm not involved in that decision making process. Okay, um, so do you have like a group where you like you have all your friends, all your buddies, and you say, okay, guys, this is what I'm doing? It's just uh, so I, I used to have one group, uh, it's no longer active at the moment. Um, but I mean, if if you want to create a group, okay, um, I'm happy to be part of it. Um, okay, I could just share what I'm doing. Um, and then and whoever wants feels comfortable with doing it can just piggyback off of it. But okay. one thing is to say is I I when I invest, I invest very, very infrequently. Okay. So but we can ask you questions in that group. Say for example, you can, you can say I really what do you think about this? You can ask questions. So okay. for example, I, I did some investments in March. I've not done anything since then. I might not do another investment on in another in the 12, 18 months. Mm -hmm. So I do it very frequently. Uh, so it's not like I trade every day or every other month. I only trade when I feel there's an opportunity. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to ask you this question. Sorry, Remy. I know we're one hour, 30 minutes on the dot. Just this question is, would you advise to invest as a third party um, or through an investor to, or invest through a broker? Um, so, I mean, however you're investing, you're going to need a broker anyway. Uh, your, your broker is, is, is the 
is a company where you have your stock invested. Okay. Uh, so the ones that will place the trade on your behalf and they will settle your trades. Um, so always invest through your own company. Um, don't use top parties. We are introducing another person into the into the into the, into the chain, which one adds more risk. Uh, it probably will add an additional cost. So just don't don't do top parties. Just go directly to your broker. My my recommendation or my suggestion would always be go to your broker, decide how much you want to invest. Among, invest consistently in an index fund, preferably, preferably the S&P 500 index, and do it consistently over time. And let it just run the time. Just let it run. Okay. Uh, don't, don't go in and be checking the investment every, every month or every two months. Just, just put it on autopilot and just forget about it. And then maybe at retirement, let's say you're 35 now, just look at it again maybe at, when you're 50 or when you're 45. Mm-hmm. If you must, you can check maybe once a year, but uh, just let it ride, let it run, let the money work for you, and don't worry too much about it. If you hear that in the market that there is a sell-off or the markets are crashing, and you have extra money, you buy more index at that point in time. Okay. Um, over and beyond your normal monthly um, investments, um, and then you do just fine. Um, it might look like nothing is happening in the first one, two, three years. You just let it run. Uh, it's just like you, you let let the market forces work for you. It's like when you when you go to plant a seed and put it in the ground, the nutrients are already there. So the fact that the, the, it doesn't sprout in the first two weeks or one month, it doesn't mean there is no activity in the background. It's happening. The compounding is working, but it just takes time to break through. Mm-hmm. And let, just let time work itself. Just let time work. Um, if you prefer your own uh, your own domestic centric index, fine. But my natural choice is the S&P international one. Thank you so much, Remy. Any other questions, please? Are there any other questions, Remy? You agreed that you're going to drop your contact details. Uh, you send that to me, and then I'll share it with everybody. Um, any other question, please? I mean, I have one question. I think, I, I, I think I, I, I've kept you on this call for too long, but I, I'll call you. Any other questions? Okay, I can, I can, I can talk to you. Okay. Just, <laughs> okay, so but I'll make this one the very last question. Um, okay, so Remy has dropped his, his phone number. Remy, do you want to drop your email address just in case it's for the people that are not in the country? Remy has dropped his phone number and is typing his email. Remy, so... Yeah. You know, right now I'm doing the U.S. index funds and the legal thing. Do you recommend that I expand that portfolio even within index to other asset classes? Um, I think the index is diversified enough. You have a basket of 500 companies. And within that basket, you have companies that are focused on um, mining, gold, silver, you have the ones that are into oil, you have the ones that are into properties. So you already have that diversification within that index. Okay. So if you want to now say, okay, let me do another, I, in my personal view, it will be okay. Yeah, stretching thing. Uh, and then that kind of, kind of neutralizes your own Okay. Uh, so I, I think the index in, index is, is good enough. If you want to say, okay, let me have another income stream. Mm-hmm. You could decide and say, okay, let me buy a property, for example. Okay, so that, move out from, from stuff yeah. and do something yeah. else. Yeah, and yet, so some people just prefer to see, oh, um, stocks is a bit too virtual for me. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just looking at this index on my computer. Yeah. I want to see yeah. a house. I want to see the whole thing. <laughs> I can see this house. I can see the tenant in there. I can know that I can buy a room and say, pay me my rent. Okay. So people prefer that. that. Um, for me, um, property is just a little bit too much hassle. Um, okay. Um, but that's just my personal view. The stocks I can just do five minutes on computer and I'm done. All right, cool. Funto, Funto has the questions. Funto, do you want to go for it? Sorry, it, it's actually the husband. I just wanted to ask oh. Mr. Remy. Uh, uh, how did you get into our session, Funto's husband? 
No, because I'm also a member of this group. I'm Daniel's oh, right. colleague. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologies. Thank Go for it. Thank you very much. So I just wanted to ask Mr. Remy, thank you so much for the 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 lecture. I just want to ask, maybe you have a blog that you write or you have a material that gives us, because you've talked so much about S&P that I've ever heard. I wanted to ask, maybe you have anything like that that one could read, follow you, and also, apart from the fact that I can call you or send you emails, but to also read and inform myself. Uh, well, I, I I used to have something on Facebook because I left Facebook, um, but I don't do it that anymore. What, what I used to do was I had this page on Facebook. I believe it's still there, but I think it's managed by my other friend. Um, if you search for um, on Facebook in pursuit, let me check right. What's it called? Um, I think it's one page I used to, and what I used to do then was I used to kind of put like nuggets of of, of, of kind of investment tips, mm. investment kind of investment wisdom from the books I read. So as I was, if I'm reading a book about investing, I see an idea or something that is of value, a thought that is of value, I just post on there. Um, and maybe I'm, I'm doing a trade, um, I'm reading a book, and it gives me an idea, and I do an investment off the back of that idea. I publish it, and then I publish the results. Um, so is it still there? Is it still live? I think it's still live. I, I don't think it's active anymore, but it has a history of past posts that I've made in there. Okay, let me check. Let's see if I can find it. Um, okay. But I don't I don't do that anymore anyway. Um, let me see what I was saying now. You're just a wealth of, of knowledge. You're not sharing this thing. <laughs> it, it just takes quite a, a lot of time. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, with, with business and all, it's, it's kind of time consuming. You know, yeah, I understand. Of, Okay, any other question? Is there any other question from anybody? Somebody just posted, Kola just posted, Tony Robinson, Money Master, The Game is a good read. Remy, have you heard of that? Uh, no, I don't know that. Uh, the, so, so we've been talking about index investing. Now, mm -hmm. the book, um, I would suggest. Mm -hmm. Okay. People to read for index investing. It's what? Um, I'm going to put the link here. My little. Um, well, let me just make sure I get the name right. With Daniel's book principles. Huh? Oh, okay. So someone's asking about can you see the message on there? Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm trying to get the name right. So I okay. Think, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I've got the name now. So it's my little book of common sense. By Jack Bogle. So it was written by Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he's the father of index investing. So it gives you all you need to know and the logic and the rationale behind index investing. Um, if you want to do index investing, that is the go to book. Um, you, can, you can't find a better book. Than that one is not And it gives you the knowledge and the, the rationale for, for that investment strategy. Um, <clears throat> of course, if there are other books, um, and the other books have read, um, there's, there's one other one that I've put it there. If, if you decide you want to do uh, active investing, so you want to invest in specific companies, uh, 
you go for the new buffer talent. Um, now, if you want to do specific company investing, I, I don't usually advise, um, but if you feel you have the time and the inclination to do that, and invest time in the research, read the new Buffettology by Mary Buffett. Um, I made one mistake though when I when I read that. Um, uh, I, I started to invest before finishing the book. You don't want to do that. Um, finish the book first, then and, invest. Plan, and then invest. Um, because what I did was I invest. I, I think I read up to chapter six and I got too excited and I invested. <laughs> and by the time I got to chapter eight, I did exactly the same. Some exactly the exact same thing that chapter eight was telling me. Well. Um, so yeah, read the book, um, and then once you read that book and you. And you feel comfortable and understand it, yeah. then start to dip your toe in the waters gradually. Now, the new buffetology will tell you, the, it will give you the methodology um, on how to invest in specific companies. However, if you want to understand the mindset of an investor, mm -hmm. how to think, how to maintain your temper, um, the mindset of an investor, then it would be the intelligent investor. Yeah, by Benjamin Graham. So Benjamin Graham was the guy that mentored Warren Buffett. Yeah. That's where Warren Buffett learned or started his career in a little bit. Um, um, so that would teach you about the mindset of the books. But one caution though, intelligent investor is is not an easy read, is a complex book. Uh, so it might take some time to digest that book. It's 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 very, very technical very kind of financial almost kind of in the economics landscape mm. uh, it's very technical uh, so but it, if you, it requires concentration essentially it requires concentration and if you if you don't have maybe like a finance or economics background you might need to kind of have google on the side to kind mm. of google kind of things so, yeah. Remy I can't thank you enough like thank you so much so many things that you shared with me before and so many things I'm hearing for the first time you guys please can we say thank you to Remy um uh, I know he says that he enjoys doing this but you've given us two and a, uh, like what more than two hours of your time and I really really appreciate it a lot thank you I'll come back to you with um the feedback about creating the group okay and and um, and if this is something that we do, we'll take it up with you. Of course, you give us your rules and your regulations before we add you onto the group and stuff like that. Uh, so thank you so much. Everybody saying thank you. Thank you, Remy. I can't thank you enough. Really, really appreciate it. So thanks, thank everybody. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you. you. So today marks the last day of our conversations about, well, not, not entirely. We still have one more conversation going on. Um, but thank you so much for everybody for joining. I know I'm going to do so many things that Remy has taught today, and I hope you walk away here to get some things done for yourself. And if there's something is like something he said about what he has done for his daughter, so if you have a son, you have a a a, a daughter, I think it would be very great for you to start up investing for that child. Um, whatever birthday you do now, the child doesn't really remember, but you will definitely remember all the millions that you've invested for him or her. So thanks everybody again, um, and see you in the group, Remy. I owe you one. Just one. Thank you. Thank so. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.